no haiku today. Way too much to talk about. Let's talk a little bit about the Democratic National Convention, and then let's talk about mail-in voting and the post office. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Hey, hey, this is Gene. Good morning. That's now Wednesday. We're going to release this podcast a little earlier. Um, so let's let's get right into it. Let's not mess around. So I have only four words to describe the virtual Democratic National Convention. What a shit show. That will be the haiku of the day. It just absolutely terrible. It's been two days. Uh, I watch sporadically. I just really am annoyed by it. I didn't learn anything from it, and that's a tragedy. It was a tragedy because it was like eight hours long for two days so far. I'm not going to play any clips. I'm going to wait until Friday until the whole thing ends because there's just too much. (laughs) There's just honestly too much crap. Um, And all the people are basically saying the same. But let's go over what I've learned in the first two days. Let's go over the skinny. First off, there's a lot of push for emotion. No reasoning, mind you. Michelle Obama's speech is an example of that. It's about empathy and love and lies and blah, 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 blah. I was going to have to cut. I was going to have a cut of her speech, and I'm going to do that on Friday. But I'm going to save it. I'm going to wait for Friday because I think there's a lot of cuts. And I lied. I'm going to actually, I do actually have one cut I'd like to use because I think it really is disgusting. Um, The other thing, they never talked about a platform. They still don't have a platform. And what they, they, they're not standing by something. In 2016, it was about um, women's rights and sexism and all this stuff. And Trump's a sexist and a racist and a, very bad man. Um, But there is nothing here. Absolutely nothing. So we didn't really learn a thing. The only platform they have is Trump is bad. As a matter of fact, I think there was no mention of Biden and all they did was talk about Trump. This This has become the Trump convention. They're really doing him a favor. There's no mention of Biden. There's no mention of Harris. And criticizing her, and they brought it up again, criticizing her is racist and sexist, which is honestly such an old argument. No one cares. Everyone is being called a racist and sexist these days or a misogynist or a um, bigot or a homophobe or a xenophobe or whatever. Nobody cares. It's really just absolutely ancient and old. Uh, It was really staged. Some of these speeches were recorded like two weeks ago. Some even say, said AOC's speech where she nominated Bernard uh, Sanders was uh, a couple of months old and she just decided to go with it. There was a lot of faux patriotism, which was absolutely disgusting. The singing of the National Anthem and the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance was just terrible, considering the Democrats think we should kneel for the National Anthem. The Democrats want to eliminate God from the National, from the Pledge of Allegiance. And Democrats want to remove any reference to God in the Pledge of Allegiance and want to remove it from schools. So for them to have a bunch of kids sit back and say the Pledge of Allegiance and sing the National Anthem, it's, it's just... It's just terrible. And the gaslighting is absolutely insane. Two examples are Andrew Cuomo actually talking about COVID-19. Really? Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo's got to be the worst governor in the country. Andrew Cuomo's state killed more people from COVID-19 than just about it. I think the only state that has more deaths is uh, New Jersey, right down the street. So to sit there and have him talk, and then, and then not to mention, he lies about his statistics in the state. 
So they probably have more COVID-19 deaths than he initially said, than they initially reported. It's just, it's absolutely terrible. That absolute gaslighting. And then Michelle Obama's BS speech on how Trump is locking people in cages. Are you kidding? It wasn't Trump that built the cages. It was actually Obama that built the cages and started throwing kids. Those pictures where we see those kids in cages is not from Trump's time. That was from 2014 in the middle of Obama's presidency. It was just a real shit show. Uh, it, and it's it's getting crappier and crappier and crappier. Last night, AOC, I, like I t- mentioned, AOC nominated Bernie Sanders. Everyone's talking about that. She got one minute. I guess she was just really pissed off about it. So um, she decided to nominate him. And <laughs> uh, people are saying basically she just killed herself in the... Um, Democratic Party? I don't think so. She's just a wild leftist. So, uh, it's just absolutely just terrible. It is so, and it is so boring. There is just, this is just, oh my lord. Now, I do want to play one clip because I think this clip pretty much sums up the bullshit of this convention. So, this is a gal whose father in Arizona whose father was a Republican, and her father was a Republican, and he died of COVID-19. And of course, what does she do? She immediately blames Trump. Listen. Hi, I'm Kristen Urquiza. I'm one of the many who has lost a loved one to COVID. My dad, Mark Anthony Urquiza, should be here today, but he isn't. He had faith in Donald Trump. He voted for him listened to him, believed him and his mouthpieces when they said that coronavirus was under control and going to disappear, that it was okay to end social distancing rules before it was safe, and that if you had no underlying health conditions, you'd probably be fine. So in late May, after the stay-at-home order was lifted in Arizona, my dad went to a karaoke bar with his friends. A few weeks later, he was put on a ventilator, and after five agonizing days, He died alone in the ICU with a nurse holding his hand. My dad was a healthy 65-year-old. His only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump, and for that, he paid with his life. I am not alone. Once I told my story, a lot of people reached out to me to share theirs. They asked me to help them keep their communities safe, especially communities of color, which have been disproportionately affected. They asked me, a normal person, to help because Donald Trump won't. The coronavirus has made it clear that there are two Americas, the America that Donald Trump lives in and the America that my father died in. Enough is enough. Donald Trump may not have caused the coronavirus, but his dishonesty and his irresponsible actions made it so much worse. We need a leader who has a national, coordinated, data-driven response to stop this pandemic from claiming more lives and to safely reopen the country. We need a leader who will step in on day one and do his job to care. One of the last things that my father said to me was that he felt betrayed by the likes of Donald Trump. And so when I cast my vote for Joe Biden, I will do it for my dad. I mean, that's pretty disgusting. I, I, by the way, that gal got a minute longer than AOC got to to speak. Um, It's just disgusting. So her father was a Republican and she believed he believed in Trump. He voted for Trump and now he's dead. So Trump, again, a murderer. Again, no reason, no platforms, orange man bad. That is the platform. Okay. So I, it was, it's, it's so far, it's absolutely terrible. It is boring to watch. It is absolutely terrible to watch. Um, and the one thing I do believe is Republicans should be watching this and make sure they do not do this. They need, and I know they're going to have one. They're actually going to have a convention where people get together, maybe 
a third of the population will be there. A third of attendance will be there. But the Republicans need to have a convention because this is not improving the um, the Democrats' stance. This is not helping Biden at all. It's just, it's that terrible. Um, as a matter of fact, I think if you juxtapose the um, Trump going from Michigan to Arizona to Minnesota, he, he's actually traveling around and he's speaking live. This really looks bad. It looks like the Democrats are just cowards. It's just terrible. But I, I do have to play a bunch of clips, and we'll do that on Friday or this weekend uh, because it is worth listening to. So let's get into this post office mess, and I, I really don't think this is a big thing. One of the things, but apparently it's becoming, I this has become bigger than the Middle East peace deal for some reason, the post office. You're right. The That's right. The post office is become a big deal. I... I I was thinking of scandals left and right, Russia, Ukraine, China, Iran, uh, Stormy Daniels, you know, major scandals. The post office is now the major scandal of the day, and I'm not really seeing it. Uh, but the problem, the reason the post office has become a scandal or become a controversy or whatever is because Trump says stupid things. If Trump would just shut up and not say stupid things, like he wants to defund the post office so universal mail-in ballots uh, voting can be eliminated, I, I things would be great. The reality is he made a joke. He thought, hey, maybe that, maybe that would be a great idea. Uh, and the Democrats went with it. And so the, the major peace deal in the Middle East is now being ignored. It's been less than, I, I said, the Middle East peace deal was going to be literally a day and we'd forget about it and we'll find something else. And here it is. It's all about the post office. Let's take a look at this postal thing because Josie, my fiance, came over and she mentioned about it. She mentioned it and I was just like, that's just such a non-story. This is not a story. And she said, well, everyone's talking about, yeah, of course, everyone's talking about it. And there's just nothing really to talk about. So let, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about it. Let's first start with mail-in voting. And I did talk about mail-in voting before, but what is the story with this whole thing? Um, what will happen and is happening in states that are sending applications or ball for ballots? That's what they're basically doing. How does it work? So what happens is a state will send out an application for you to get a mail-in ballot. So I receive my application. Basically, it asks me to confirm my address and, and sign. And that's all the identification I have. Uh, no other identification is needed. I did have to add a stamp. So I go in there. I tape the thing up. In two to three weeks, I'm going to receive a ballot. I'll fill out the ballot, making sure I follow all the instructions or my ballot will be invalid, which is going to be a thing. A lot of ballots are going to be invalid because people don't know how to freaking read and they're going to fill it out wrong. I'll put the ballot in the mail and hopefully it will get to where it needs to go and it will be counted. My vote will be counted. Republicans don't want mail-in balloting, and Democrats want mail-in ballot. Now, one of the things that is needs to be pointed out is there's a difference between an absentee ballot and a universal mail-in ballot. First off, an absentee ballot, you do need to request it. You do need to prove who you are. You do need to fill out an application and send it in, and then they will send you the absentee ballot. This is not not so. This actually comes to you. You fill it out. You send it back. And then you get your ballot. So it's completely different. Um, Republicans see several problems, including, including corruption. And this is a big one. 
Um, California does something called ballot harvesting, which basically is uh, individuals from a specific party actually go out to get the ballots. That's really scary. It's also extremely ripe with corruption. It, it, it happens. In California, there's practically no Republican representatives. Even in cities like, or uh, counties like Orange County, Riverside County, San Bernardino County, San Diego County, which are very conservative counties that don't have any Republicans. A lot of people point to that and say, hey, that's corruption. Now, the Democrats will say there's absolutely no evidence of corruption. Um, no, that's not true. They actually have tons of evidence of corruption. They've got people in jail for um, uh, ballot fraud. So I don't know what, I mean, just go in. You can go to, uh, who is it? Um, what was that website? The Heritagefoundation.org actually has a list of examples of ballot fraud and people who have been convicted of ballot fraud. The other problem is non-citizens voting. That includes illegal aliens. This is a thing. In California, if you go to the DMV, you can actually fill out, whether you're legal or illegal, you can fill out an application for an ID card, and that application looks exactly like an application for voting. And people have said that illegals or non-citizens have actually gone in and filled out the wrong application and turned it in. So that's not good. Um, accidental loss of ballots. You're depending on the mail service to actually send the ballot. How do I know the ballot's going to get there? How do I know that the post office uh, is not just going to, the, the uh, postman is not just going to throw the ballot away? This actually did happen in New Jersey. That the postman, for some reason, they actually had the political party written on the envelope of the ballot. And they saw one postman just dump a bunch of ballots right into the trash can. They got him on video doing it. He's now facing, uh, he's now facing charges for ballot fraud. Lack of identification where, of where the ballots are going. So basically, California is just sending a crap load of, of ballot applications out there. And we don't know where there's going. Right now, in my place, I've lived with like 50 people. There is a ton of ballot applications here. Technically, I could steal those ballot applications and start filling out names. I'm not even sure any of these people are allowed to vote if they're actually American citizens or not. I think they are, but I know they're legal. But I mean, are they are they legal to vote? I don't know. Um, someone can vote multiple times. I could literally walk in, steal the ballots here, send them all in with different signatures. I won't do that. I thought about it, but I won't do that because it's illegal. I could go to prison for it. And then I can vote multiple times on someone else's identity. Uh, there has been a cat that's been dead for 10 years that actually got a ballot application. Dead people are getting ballot applications. It's really, it's, it's really disgusting. It's really disturbing. And it makes you wonder whether this is going to work. Um, ballots could be delivered to the, ballot applications could be delivered to the wrong address. Someone moves. That's the difference between an absentee ballot and a, a mail-in, universal mail-in ballot. So I move, let's say I move from here. They have my old address. They actually send the ballot to the address I'm no longer there and someone takes it who's living here now and fills it out. Uh, and just to show you how bad the state of California is, um, I, the um, child support services, because I actually work uh, with my divorce for child support, I had my child support actually taken out of my uh, check. They still had me living in a house a, with an address of a house that I lived in when I was like 16. I said, not only do I not live in this place, I actually, that house has been sold. I don't even think it's standing anymore. And you guys are sending information, personal information to that address. Pretty scary if you think about it.
Delays in election results. You got to depend on the mail. And they're, they're, the voting for November 3rd's election starts in August on August 29th. August 29th. Why? Because the post office has to get all those ballots in there. What happens if you decide to actually send a ballot out on, I don't know, October 31st? Is your ballot going to get there on time? Is it going to be counted? And if it is counted, it can, it can take the post office like 15 days before they actually get the ballot to where it's supposed to be. So we're talking November 3rd. We may not know who won the election. So you've got a lot of, you've got the possibility of a lot of uncounted ballots. And the big problem is the speed of the postal service. The postal service says it could take about uh, 15 days. You could take 15 days before you get your ballot or three weeks before you get your ballot. And it could take 15 days to actually deliver the ballot. So this is, this is not a thing. This is just, I think this is terrible. I don't know why everyone is so afraid to go yeah, COVID-19, whatever. But that is your responsibility. If you want to vote, go to a polling place and vote. I'm already getting ahead of myself. So the Democrats say there's no evidence of corruption, which is bullshit. There is a lot of evidence that there's corruption. There's a lot of evidence that there's corruption in the United States. They said that COVID-19 is a reason. COVID-19 is flattening out. People are still getting it. But the reality is it's, it's out there. It's always going to be out there. And there is no reason why you can't just wait in line, social distance, wear a mask, and go vote at a polling place. This avoids voter suppression because it's convenient and everyone will get one. Yes, everyone and then some will get get one, get them. In California, there was one vote, not kidding you, one county that voted 120, that had 120% of voter registration. What does that mean? It means if there were a million people there, 1.2 million actually voted. Gee, that sounds like it's good. It's convenient. Yeah, it's not about convenience. Absentee ballots work fantastic is what the Democrats say. Yeah, well, absentee ballots, you've got to request an absentee ballot. And you've got to confirm your identity with an absentee ballot. So if I'm in the military and I'm in the Middle East and I want to vote, I have to go and I have to say, I'd like to vote. I have to tell them where I am. I have to tell them who I am. I have to fill all sorts of IDs, information, to get an absentee ballot. I did an absentee ballot uh, four years ago because I just couldn't get to a polling place. I was new. I didn't know where the polling places were. So I, I requested an absentee ballot. And I had to fill in a whole deal in order to actually get this absentee ballot. I was able to go online and do it, but I had to fill out an application. And it was not a, this is my name, this is my address, thank you. I had to fill out identification, my ID, everything. It's just, I think this is a disaster waiting to happen. The Democrats are lying if they say there's no evidence of corruption. I say that a third time, and I'm going to say it a fourth or fifth. California is completely Democratic even in red areas, San Diego, Orange Side, River, Orange uh, County, Riverside County, Kern County, these are actually red counties, and yet they are all Democrat. And a lot of people point to those counties and say, this is where is corruption. So there is, this is rife with corruption. I don't understand, again, why we can't just go to a, a a voting place. Why we can't just go in to a school, we social <coughs> distance, and we just vote. <coughs> the Democrats do not see the biggest problem uh, of mail-in ballots, universal mail-in ballots, as corruption. They see the big problem as the post office. They may not have the capacity, the post office may not have the capacity to handle all those ballots. We're talking 130 to 140 million pieces of mail. And this election, it could even go higher than that. So what are the Democrats doing? Um, they want to give more funding to the post office, which is really weird. The post office has a budget and still has plenty of money for the year. 
probably more money than the government has to actually spend on funding. I mean, don't forget, we have spent almost $8 trillion this year. Money isn't a thing for the Democrats. It is for the country. We are actually adding to our debt, so this is not good. In the HEROES Act, which was never passed by the Senate, uh, and it was meant to replace the CARES Act, which still has money and still is not working, they put in $25 billion, that's billion with a B, for the post office. It got rejected by the Senate. This week, they introduced a separate bill that would only fund the post office $25 billion. So they actually, they never did anything to, you know, President Trump had to extend the CARES Act but, but through executive order. The Democrats refused to even meet. But, hey, you know, they'll spend $25 billion on the post office. Again, that was rejected by the Senate, and it would have been vetoed by pr the President Trump. Since the post office is not going to get any extra money, the Democrats, of course, are saying that Trump is trying to suppress the vote. Mm, typical. Trump, on the other hand, said the post office needs to be fixed. More on that one in a second. And does not need any more money, which is true. They really don't need any more money. They're already being financed. Uh, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, said the United States needs to spend money wisely and not waste it. And one of the ways we should be spending it is not on the post office, we should be spending it on getting aid relief to people, which the Democrats and, and Nancy Pelosi in the House just refuse to do. You know what happens when they don't get their way, right? They get nasty, and that's what the Democrats are doing right now. They say not only is Trump trying to weaken the post office, but he is physically trying to damage the post office and their capacity. Some idiot decided to tweet a picture of a flatbed truck filled with mailboxes being picked up. There was another tweet being picked up by the post office. There, so mailboxes were being pulled off the street, loaded onto this flatbed truck. Another tweet showed that there were mailboxes with locks on them. And so that, you know, people couldn't just drop mail in. All this on Trump's orders to suppress the vote, say the Democrats. Okay, there were a couple problems with these observations. Trump didn't say this. The post office actually said there were problems with these observations. Uh, the postmaster general said that mailboxes are moved around according to use. So if they have a mailbox in the middle of, let's say, my street, that mailbox is probably not getting used. So they pick them up and they move them someplace else or they remove them. Mailboxes are removed and replaced when they get old and need maintenance. And he said, all this, this is normal stuff. This has been happening since 2009. This is nothing new. Locks are put on mailboxes and access is restricted to the people within a specific community. And it's not because people, they want to restrict people from delivering mail or uh, being able to send mail. It's to prevent people from stealing mail. Only people in the community actually have keys and are able to put mail in that specific mailbox. I have one of those in my community. I actually have to borrow a key to open the mailbox so I can uh, open the, the, the slot so I can put mail inside the mailbox. All of this stuff has been happening for a decade. So this is nothing new. So you can see... Everything the Democrats are accusing the president of, again, is just complete bullshit, and they're ignoring all the things that are actually happening. Now, the post office, to be honest, is just a complete mess. The Democrats know it, the Republican know, Republicans know it, the president knows it, the postmaster general knows it. The post office has lost $74 billion in the last 10 to 13 years. This is because of bad deals with the unions on retirement programs. They overpay for retirement. Um, mail takes an average of five days to get from point A to point B. Uh, we already know that the cost of postage is way too low and way too consistent. So, for example, it's the same price to send a, a piece of mail from New York to Alaska as it is to send a mail from one house to the other on the same block. Um, that's not good. It's not good business. 
uh, they believe that during the election, mail could be delayed by three weeks because of the speed of the post office. They're just not very quick. And they're actually recommending you send the ba the ballot, you know, three weeks before the election so that you can, your ballot will get in on time. This seems weird that you, uh, that the United Postal Service is having so much trouble um, because no company by law is allowed to comp compete with the post office. No, po no company can make postage cheaper than the post office, which again is part of their problem. They're so cheap that, uh, but they cannot be undercut. Nobody can undercut the post office's first class postage. Basically, the USPS is a monopoly, but it's run so crappily, again, by the government, because the government sucks at everything, that uh, companies like FedEx um, and others can actually, will actually get more uh, deliveries because the post office is so bad. I can't remember the last time I got something I ordered from the post office. And I know that things that I've ordered, some things that I've ordered have come from the, the post office, the, the USPS, and it's taken ages to get it. So the postmaster has a plan to fix these things. He wanted to make it more efficient. He wanted to make it more competitive. Basically, raised rates is essentially what's going to end up happening. Um... But this pissed off Democrats. Now, don't forget, the Postmaster General is a Trump appointee. So, of course, if a company is losing $3 billion a year, the Democrats are going to get pissed off that he wants to actually fix the post office. Um, but the, post, the Postmaster General decided, you know something, we're just, instead of dealing with this terror from the Democrats, he's decided... We'll just wait until after the election to actually fix the post office because you do not want anything to be blamed if the election goes bad. Well, here's the thing about this whole deal. The Democrats are going to blame Trump for whatever. It's not going to make any difference. The Postmaster General has also agreed that he will go in front of Congress and testify not exactly sure what the point of that is, but it is a thing that that he's going to do. So he he is going to he's going to testify. He won't make any changes before the election. But when the election results come in and they end up screwed up, I can guarantee you one thing: he's still going to get blamed. Now, to conclude this podcast, uh, I I want you to listen to this from Nancy Pelosi who, by the way, doesn't think it's important enough to try and get aid to people who are unemployed due to COVID, uh, something that the Democrats support. They support uh, keeping everything closed, of course, till November 4th, and then they'll want to open up the uh, economy again, uh, just to blame Trump. She refuses to give extension to unemployment benefits or anything like that. But she does want to give money to the post office. She does want to um, make this into the brand new scandal de jour. The media, of course, is completely on the Democrat side again. And you should hear this twisted uh, report. This is from Reuters, who's supposed to be a legitimate news agency. Listen to the absolute bias in this reporting and it I, I just I find it amazing that these people really I, Israel had a peace deal with the United Arab Emirates this week and this is what we're talking about the post office 74 billion in losses over 10 years and somehow we need to fund them, give them more money that they already have. They don't even need it. But I want you to listen to this report and listen to how biased and how, oh, it's just, it's terrible. 
acceptance of the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said Sunday she's calling U.S. lawmakers back to Washington this week to protect the Postal Service ahead of an election where nearly half of all voters could cast ballots by mail. Democrats have accused President Donald Trump of trying to hamstring the cash-strapped Postal Service to suppress mail-in voting. And they are calling on Trump-appointed Postal Service Chief Louis DeJoy to testify about a wave of cost cuts that have slowed mail delivery across the country. Critics are warning the cuts could disrupt the counting of ballots come November. But Trump defended DeJoy and his actions at a press conference on Saturday. He's a fantastic man. He wants to, he wants to make the post office great again. Do you ever hear the expression? He wants to make the post office great again. The post office is a catastrophe. In a letter to lawmakers on Sunday, Pelosi said the House would vote to prohibit the Postal Service from implementing any changes to services it had in place at the beginning of the year. Beyond Congress, states like Virginia, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, North Carolina, and Washington are also weighing legal action to stop the Postal Service from making changes that could affect the election outcome. Voting by mail is nothing new in the United States. One in four voters cast ballots that way in 2016. But Trump has repeatedly claimed without evidence that a surge in mail-in voting would lead to fraud. A senior Democratic aide said House lawmakers would likely return on Saturday to vote on the Postal Service bill. I'm demanding that Leader McConnell go into regular session. U.S. Democratic Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer also called on Sunday for the Senate to reconvene. But a spokesman for Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said there were no scheduling updates. DeJoy did not respond to a request for comment. But White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows told CNN on Sunday that the administration feared a surge in mail-in voting could delay election results and leave the naming of the new president to Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. What gaslighting in that report? Um... It's common in the United States? No, it's, it is it is in the United States. It's not common in the United States. One in four cast ballots? No, those are absentee ballots. That has nothing to do with universal balloting. Trump claims there could be corruption with no evidence? No, there's plenty of evidence. I, just this whole thing is such a waste of fucking time. I am so tired of just the gaslighting, the misdirection of the Democrats and the fact the media just keeps playing into it. I thought when I heard that, when I heard that, um, I heard that news report, I said, I got to include this because it just shows the bias of the media. But here's the thing. I have some questions. Why is this story more important than the peace deal between Israel and the UAE? The USPS has been fucked up for decades. Why is this a thing right now? And wasn't Nancy Pelosi in Congress? And she did she do anything to fix the USPS? Did Obama do anything to fix the USPS? Did Bush do anything to fix the USPS? Why are we changing the way we're voting today? When did it become a thing that we just receive ballots in the mail and we just send them out like it's a census or something. When did it become a bad thing to actually go to a polling place? I know why. Because the Democrats have no chance unless there's some corruption. If you're afraid to vote because of COVID-19, why not just request an absentee ballot? Then fill out the application, put in the IDs that you need. Why was this not a thing four months ago? Why is this a thing now? And finally, why can't Trump just shut his mouth and not say anything? They are creating a catastrophe where there is no catastrophe. Trump is not going, is not hamstringing the, uh, hamstringing the post office. The post office is not doing anything different than it did before. Everything they're doing is the same as it was before. They've been doing this same routine for 10 years. There's nothing different. Why is this a thing now? Here are the reasons. Mail vo mail-in voting is corrupt. And Joe Biden has not a chance if th this thing, this election is run fairly. He has no chance. He probably has maybe a 35 to 40% chance. His poll numbers are dropping like a rock. 
his uh, national convention looks like an absolute disaster. The Democrats need to deflect the accomplishment of the Middle East peace deal, and which is truly historic, and everything else Trump has done, and make a scandal where there's no scandal. Russia didn't work. Ukraine didn't work. Now they got to do the post office. Stormy Daniels didn't work. Now let's make it out of the post office. Democrats need to gin up another scandal. Nothing else has worked. They have no platform, the Democrats don't. Uh, Biden has no platform that will be accepted by the normal person. You can see that when you look at the national convention, the Democratic National Convention. They're not holding a platform because Medicare for all, stealing, taking away your privately held insurance, um, universal uh, uh universal uh, basic income, um, guaranteed government jobs, uh, Green New Deal, all that crap is not going to sell. That's why they're not bringing any of that crap up. So they need, the only way they can do this is to just make Trump look bad and they're throwing darts at a dartboard now. It's going to get worse. They need to make excuses when Biden loses. Because here's the thing, if Biden loses in November... And I will not say when he loses in November, but if Biden loses in November, the Democrats are going to be the ones screaming that this was a corrupt election. They'll be screaming it. And it won't make any difference. It, so this is already a built-in excuse. Trump damaged the election. Then we're going to go through another impeachment, which I think would be exciting. I would love to see the same president impeached twice. That, I think, would be absolutely awesome. It would almost be worth making sure Congress, the House of Representatives, stayed Democrat just so we can have fun with this. But anyway, it, it's just, it's such a stupid story. Um, it, with the world in a mess it is right now, we've got rioting in the streets. People are getting beaten up and killed in the streets. Policemen are getting beaten up and killed. Police are being defunded. You've still got terrorist states like Iran out there, and there just doesn't seem to be any serious focus on the real problems. COVID-19 is still a thing, and the House just refuses to do anything about it. It's just such a do-nothing Congress, so worthless, finding just, just garbage to bitch about. Okay, so you can... Um, that was good. So... You can follow me on Twitter at RunninFool, R-U-N-N-I-N-F-E-W-F-E-W-L. You can download or listen to this podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, and YouTube. Uh, visit my website at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. You get all the show notes and all the videos that I have out there. This is Gene, and you've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics.